I always dreamed of the day that I would have a robotic lawnmower that could mow my lawn for me. But robotic lawnmowers that were out at the time all required a boundary wire. I didn't want to have to install one. This was exactly what I've been waiting for. Hello, I'm Wanderer001, and this is my review of the EcoFlow Blade robotic lawnmower. Not first ever sweeper, because that's an extra attachment that goes on the back that I do have and will review at a later date. This is just for the robotic mower portion of this. Now, you might hear actually mowing, which is one of my other neighbors, which is something I don't have to do anymore now that I have this robotic lawnmower. I've had this for just about a month, hence why it looks dirty and well used, because I put it through its paces through testing. However, before we start talking about that, why don't we take a look at how things looked overall spec-wise right when I got out of the box when it was in pristine, clean condition. All right, I figured we'd take advantage of the fact that this is the cleanest that this is ever going to look to talk about a few things. Let's talk about general specifications, weight, things like that. So weight is 36 pounds. This is a beast compared to some other robotic lawnmowers that are out there. Your general dimensions are 26 inches long by 17 inches wide by 12.2 inches high. In the front, it has several different sensors. You've got LiDAR, camera, and if we look right up front here, we could see those very well-touted omnidirectional wheels. And I'm gonna say, even in the videos that I saw of this, I was still confused as to how this operated. So what I actually did, aside from the wheels rotating this way, I put a white dot right here on one of the omnidirectional ones. So as I rotate that, you can see it spins around this way. So you just keep track of that dot and you can see that's actually what they mean by omnidirectional. And each one of these little points does that. This one does it, this one does it, this one does it, and both wheels sets have that. That's pretty cool. Cutting width, which you can kind of see right there, this silver cut disc underneath is 10.2 inches. Cutting height ranges from 0.8 all the way up to 3 inches, so this is going to, at the time of filming, have the highest cut deck that you can get. Noise level is generally lower than 65 decibels. That said, let's actually pull this a little closer. Right here we have our dual wheel system. This is what's going to give your lawnmower traction. They are kind of TPU material, so it's gonna be a rubberized plastic, but it does have these nice spikes. You might have seen when I was picking this up that this does rotate, so that entire pack back half is gonna move, allowing you to get a closer cut. Right here at the top, this is going to be your rain sensor. As you can see, it's nicely sloped, so that water will drip down this way, allowing rain to hit this. If I pull this up, this is actually where our battery is located. Coming back out this way, you could see this is an adjustable deck, so again, that's how you get your three inches to 0 0.8. On the back here you have your emergency stop as well as a power and home at least i think that's a timer i'll know for sure once i actually get this fully set up little ecoflow branding right there you've got a hole for the extra sweeper kit right there and what we're going to do now is we're going to take the mower turn it on its side bring cut deck into view right here here you can see these are your ecoflow branded cuttings so you actually get a set extra in the box when you purchase this over here on the sides these are guards so if you happen to grab it from underneath you're going to notice this isn't going to be able to cut you because these are here so it's an added safety feature but you shouldn't be trying to reach under this anyway there is again a lift sensor and right back here you can see these are your contact points for charging this is what's actually going to hit that charger like i said this is the cleanest that the ecoflow is going to be so i figured i'd give you a quick walk around just to give you an idea of what it looks like and it's pristine state before it actually gets out there and starts doing what it's supposed to do, which is mowing. So there are a couple things that I want to address that I didn't during the initial unboxing, and that is the lights on this. There are lights on either side up front, and then a light in the back. Now, these lights tell you things that are happening. Green for charging, blue for good satellite signal, red for there is a problem of some sort. The problem with these lights are, at night, it is very visible. And if you're trying to keep this a little stealthier, they kind of show where the position of this is and say, hey, there's something very pricey here, come steal me. Thankfully, in the application, you can turn those off. One of the things that you may have noticed when I was doing the walk around with this is there actually is no bump sensor. So compared to other robot lawnmowers that have a bump sensor that tap something, stop, and then reroute itself, the EcoFlow Blade does not have that. Everything is done up front here with its LiDAR and camera sensor array. Now, one of the things that I've noticed with the LiDAR and camera sensor array is that it's actually kind of angled downward. It's not forward facing, again, like some other models have, where they look further ahead. This kind of points itself within a few inches ahead, so if you've got an obstruction that's way far out there, it might not pick it up right away. One of the other things that I did not cover with my initial walk around was right here. This is the battery door, so if we open this up, 
here we flip this door up and then right here this is a replaceable battery so that is the beauty of this is if for whatever reason you need to replace the battery because well let's be honest wear and tear charging cycles it is a lithium ion battery uh, 298 watt hour but eventually you will need to replace this and the fact that EcoFlow makes this so simple to replace I greatly appreciate so you really don't have to take anything apart you don't have to unscrew anything it really is just plastic panels that slip into place and you can give it a good to lock it back in. You get a lot more than just the robotic lawnmower when you purchase the EcoFlow Blade. So let's take a quick look at what else you get in the box with this, aside from the obvious charging pad and cableage that you'd expect for something like this. Here's presentation wise. I did open it correctly. EcoFlow cardboard there. Right on top is our stand for the EcoFlow Blade. We're gonna move that aside. All right, over here, we have the pole construction for the RTK signal. So we're just gonna pull all that out. Tube kinda goes together like that. And here is our transmitter and cable. Everything is labeled, so probably gonna wanna read the instructions after the fact, which are located right there. Here we have the blades and screws that go on the robot lawnmower itself. I might leave these in here for now because I will probably lose those. All right, I'm assuming to keep some of your cableage down, which is smart. Probably want to hold off on doing that until later. And then these I've seen before, these are going to be your screws to hold the plate in place. Here we have our power brick. So this is the power source for the EcoFlow pad that's behind me as I'm gesturing. So we're gonna put that over there. And aside from the directions, which I heard something plink in here when I picked it up. All right, so there's two Allen wrenches in here. I'm assuming it's going to be a complete toolless operation using just those. Now the fun part, we're gonna take off the top layer to get to what we actually wanna see, which is right here. And that is the robot lawnmower itself. And here we have the blade itself. It's not gonna be easy to grab out of there. Might wanna just grab the front here, just underneath the lip and back here, because this does rotate on an angle. So that was unboxing of the EcoFlow blade. One of the big things that I found with the robotic lawnmower compared to some other options out there, uh, this is not a just drop and let it go. It, it is going to require a certain level of setup. And for me, that took two hours to do. I think the hardest part was actually finding a good place to find the RTK signal. I thought I had open sky. I didn't have open sky. I needed better signal. So that took time to kind of move around and find that. Not only that, when you have to map your entire yard, this does not move exactly fast. It kind of takes its time. So it takes a little longer to do that depending on the size of your yard. One one other thing that I found during the setup process was actually the charging dock or where it goes to lock itself into charge. When they say it needs to be level, they mean pretty much 100% level. It can't have a slight angle because what I found is this would roll up in there and then it says charging, but then it stopped charging and I found was because it wasn't level because when this hits, it rocks the station a little bit. So you're gonna wanna make sure that this is completely level. You might have to add some dirt or take away dirt in order to have that charging pad be as level as humanly possible possible. Also, the anchors, while you don't need all of them to keep the charging pad in place, you do need a few because it does, again, it hits as it docks up because the charging pads underneath right here are very much like you would have with a robotic vacuum cleaner in that these need to have contact and have maintained contact with the charging pad on the station in order to conduct a charge. So if it rocks back, those lose their 100% connection and then it stops charging. And then you have to go out and push the mower. So do yourself a favor, just make sure it's 100% level. So with that information in mind, let's take a look at some of the setup for the EcoFlow Blade. Cableage itself is actually fairly straightforward. B2 goes to B2 connector, B1 goes to B1, just like A2 and A1 go to their individual connection points. So you'll have two there, and then one that goes into the RTK, and then the power brick, which is right there. So we're gonna get this set up. All right, so we got everything hooked up, power brick over there, A2 to A2, A1 to A1, B1 to B1, and then B2 kind of comes over there. There's where my RTK is. The power station is showing blue. We're gonna come over here and tap this on and see if that'll start things off. Blue light up there and then the headlights. 
Unclear if you heard, powered on, let's start a new journey. It is notifying me that it is picking up a blade. So if you can't see that, it says blade. I'm going to say add, charge the mower. We're supposed to push the mower forward. Search for device position. Now we are on to setting up the RTK. So we're going to search for positioning. So search for antenna. We're going to say start. Ah, actually, where I have it, alter this camera right there. Showing signal strength is 94%, considering I've got all tree there and then the house is behind me. So we're going to do mowing control. So we're going to say start five, four, three, two, one. And there we go. Ooh, it jumps back at you. Control the mower. Turn around. So we've got right here a little directional D-pad. Oh, now it wants me to move the mower uh, forward. All right. And it says, sweet, great job. Now we're going to search for the charging station. Still says 96%. You now create a mow map. Remove sticks. Recommended height for three inches. And then I'm supposed to stand seven feet behind it. Should not be a problem. We're going to select next. Satellite signal is normal mower is charging mower is charged 50 percent so my yard isn't terrible so i'm hoping that 50 percent will be enough so start mapping map the working area restricted zones won't have any paths so let's uh, get started with mapping that's going to kick out just like that I made a beeping noise all right so it's saying move this to the edge and then hit start Now, once you get everything set up with this, you have your map, you have your RTK. You're gonna send it out for its first run. We're gonna take a look at that, but I'm gonna give you some things that I learned after the first run. You will need to run it one or two times to get everything pristinely level because there are gonna be a few tufts of graphs here and there that stick up. It will give you those track lines or those mow lines and depending on the layout of your yard, you might wanna have it a little further away from barriers so that it doesn't get locked up or hit them. And part of that is due to the way that this turns, it spins, instead of doing a four point turn, it kinda whips itself around in order to give it that quick right up and down. So here we go, this is gonna be the first initial run of the Eagle Flip Blade. We cut height up to three, just because it's been about a week since I've had the grass and what I call grass, I'm using as a very loose term because it's kind of a mixture of things. If I come over here very quickly, uh, it's a mixture of like crab grass and clover and whatever that is. So it is grass in that it is green and I need it to be mowed. So that is what we have for the EcoFlow blade to do. I set up the EcoFlow, here we go, here we go, 90% and we're gonna do our initial start right there and here we go. Start a task. It's starting a task which should be just a full mow. Give it a second, it's thinking making a beeping noise and there it goes the deck height should be three inches you can clearly see there is a line there so it is cutting why it's making a beeline for the farthest point in my yard i do not know unless it wants to start itself all the way back here we're gonna find out all right it is thinking App is showing that 0% is complete. I think it's looking to start itself in the furthest point of my yard. Or since this is also the first time that it's doing it, it's getting acquainted. Hoping it's getting itself situated. There you go. Should be about the border. Flipping around right there. You can see it's a little ruddy. And all right, yeah, it's gonna do this little spot back here. So it knows there's a no-go zone, so it's gonna go swipe back and forth. Right there, see? There we go. We're gonna let it do this little corner lot here. And then I'm going to uh, swing back once it's done doing this. Yeah, you can see, oh, oh, is it gonna miss that piece right there? Nope, it got it. We'll do some more actual testing. Oh, oh, look at that, see, got hung up there a little bit. 
and the wheels are spinning, but those nice treads in the back kind of do what it needs to do. So from that corner, it decided to make a mad dash back this way. It is cutting, you can, you can see and I got in its way, so it's thinking. Now it's making sure. But you can, you can see that that grass is being cut. You can see the line. But I'm not sure why it's choosing to go where it goes yet. I'm hoping it's just because it's the first time out and it's figuring everything out. Here, I've got an interesting spot. There's some shadows and it's in between two decks. So it's not sure what to do apparently. It's backing out of there and there it's going forward. I will say in between the two decks is where it had the least amount of signal for the GPS and the RTK. So I don't know if it thinks it can do that. We'll let it sit there and figure it out and we'll find out. After it did this, and we're gonna say did in air quotes, uh, cause you can see there are spots that it missed. It tried to do this. I might have to remap this because that's where the building is. The signal wasn't as good. It uh, took a beeline down this way and it's again, pulling over there, which is odd because when I was mapping it, I go up and around the deck this this way and around. So we'll, we'll see. The AI is a little odd, but it's definitely cutting. Like you can see. All right, so it did miss like that little bit right there. Let's see if it's gonna come back. Yeah, there's a little tuft right there but that could be inconsistencies of the user who was mapping it out, which would be me. There you can see. It's... It's making straight lines, which is what you wanted with this, but it might be going at like an angle instead of straight up and down. See how it does on these rocks. There you go. It's dipping in a little bit. Got a little twisting going on. You can see the axle moving, spinning around. There it goes. There we go. You can see left-hand side is what's been mowed and the right-hand side has not. There are a couple of spots with some divots, but uh, that's not terrible. All right, we'll get it coming back this way. Doing a pretty good job staying on that straight line. You can see there is clearly grass that's tall in front of it. Oh, I'm too close. It doesn't like that. I'm backing up. All right, part of this could just be my testing and back out, give it a chance to do what it wants to do. See, once I moved, it's coming up to the line where I had it and it's spinning and there it goes. You can kind of see the striations right there. This angle, you can kind of get an idea of how uneven my backyard is and the slope that it's taking on. All right, here we go. Recharge mode, check and figure things out. There it goes. Up the ramp. Start charging. There we go. After I went and did the first launch of this, I actually had to go back and remap my yard. One, because there were some pitches that I thought it could handle that it couldn't handle and it got stuck, as well as there were some areas that were blocked because of thick foliage. I'll show you that in a moment. So just know it is a learning experience. You will have to go back and make a few edits along the way. However, in the app right now, as of filming, you cannot edit your map. You'll have to remap everything. So that's going to be some time uh, to make this as functional as you want. It would be nice if the ability to edit the map was something that you could do. Hopefully that'll come in the future. We'll wait and see. All right, so there's a couple things that we learned. The pitch here is just a little too much for it. It got hung up based on the way it was going. So I'm gonna change that. And if we come over this way. Neighbor letting me mow their yard too, go figure. This shrub right here is too dense for the actual signal to get through. So can't mow as close as I'd like there because that's getting in the way. And then over in this corner, it's a little dense too. 
because of that and the fence line. And this is probably my Wi-Fi getting a little spotty over here. So I'm gonna have to remap things. Oh, and last, in between the two houses, right here as it gets closer, it um, just lost signal altogether. So I'm gonna cut that out. Once you have everything mapped out and you have this pretty much good to go, there's a lot of other things that you can do. You could set up a schedule, you can cut up your mowing height. All of that is done through the application. So let's take a look at the application for the EcoFlow blade. This is the EcoFlow app for the EcoFlow blade. As we can see up at the top, if I select the blade, it will Bluetooth over to my blade, or if I happen to be remote and it's connected to Wi-Fi, it will connect that way. There you saw, connecting to Bluetooth. Right there you can see that icon changes, that lets you know that you are connected via Bluetooth and not Wi-Fi. To the right of that, you will see an indicator that's letting you know the GPS signal strength for it. Moving on, we have this cloud sync. Selecting that will allow you to, if you have not already set up a Wi-Fi network, uh, will allow you to set one up. Now I'm gonna go back since I already have one set up and I don't wanna disturb that. On our main screen here, we can see this is the outline of what I've already done. I have two red spots. Those red spots are the no-go zones. Over here is the total square footage. I can zoom in or out on the map. There's a little icon there where the charging base is and where the mower actually is. If it happens to be out doing what it needs to do, you will see that there will be white lines for things that it has already gone through, letting you know exactly where it is mowed. Underneath the name of it right there, Rover, because you know, I'm clever, just like about 100 other people who thought it looked like a lunar rover. There is your power indicator right now. Green indicates that it is charging and it does state charging next to that. That green number is very important because you want to see green because that does actually let you know that it is charging. Down here at the bottom, we have overall, that's what we're kind of looking at right now. We could do a selected area. So if I happen to have divided this particular spot into two, I can select which one of my areas I would like to do and then hit start and send the robot out on its way to start mowing. Grayed out is end or home. So if you send it out and you wanna bring it back prematurely, you simply select that and it will bring the robot back to the charging base. Over here we have two icons. The first being if I select it right here, this is going to be our automations. I have two automations that I have set up and then one automation that was already there, but I'm not going to turn on and this is the stop work time between. I have a mow on Monday and Wednesdays for a specific time. So if I bring that open, here I could see it starts at 1600 and then does this weekly and then start work. So I can select this and say, what do I want this to do? I can select the mow mode. I can select the cutting height overall, meaning everything, or I could select a specific area. So you can get very granular with the things that you set up. Or if you have one day a week where you have a slightly different, and in my case, everything's the same, except I lower it just a little bit because I don't want this running on the weekend when I'm around. Around, so I make the cut a little lower. But if I needed to add a new day or a new automation, I simply come up here to the upper right hand corner, select the plus sign, and I can select a new time to work and then a stop time. The one thing that I wish they would allow you to do is change this so that you could have something other than military time. Not everybody is familiar with military time. So a standard 12 hour day would be nice to see. Down here, we have our settings for the mower, the quick settings. These are, if I push the button to send it out, what is that going to do? So again, we have our speeds and then our cut height speeds and I wish this was a little more descriptive gentle normal and quick that really is the progression or the speed that the robot will move while it's cutting not gentle cut normal cut quick cut speed of which the robot moves that dialogue needs a little work in the upper right hand corner these are all the settings that we can do this was just controls and navigation for the mower selecting our settings right up here we have our name so here's rover that by default will be the serial number for your particular device here we have device sharing I can add some Somebody who I'd like to share control of the robot with. Now, in this case, I'm not going to do that, but they would need their own EcoFlow app in order to do so. You would just send them an email. About's going to give you serial numbers, all the important information that you wouldn't show in a YouTube video. So that's gonna be what that is. Work record. This is going to show you the amount of times that the robot has gone out and the average of what it did. The one thing I wish they would improve in this area is if I clicked on one of these, I wish it would show me the map. Show me what it actually did. This way, instead of just relying on square footage, I can say, okay, it did section one versus section two. And I can see that visually here. So it's, it's there, it's not great. Here we have our automation. I showed you that a little bit before, but this is just another way that you can get to it. Right here, you can see the automations. I'm gonna back up. Here we have our work preferences. So right here, rain delay. Well, do you want to have a rain delay, meaning if the 
the robots out and it senses that there's water, what does it do? In my case, I turned it on and then I said, after returning to home, wait 29 minutes before going out and completing the job. Now, you can do all the way up to 23 hours and 59 minutes, meaning you can have it wait an entire day before it goes out and does it again. So this is rather customizable, I do like that. And then coming back, we have our edge work. So one, do you want it to do edge work? So yes or no, working edge lap. So after it finishes cutting, how many times do you want it to take a lap around your edge? And then here you have how high do you want the edge to cut? You can have that lower, higher, whatever you'd like. And then when that goes out, it does it. It does not appear to do if you set it up on a routine. The routine is it goes out, it cuts. Even if you press the button and send it out and it will do the edge work after it does the primary cut. Routine, it looks like you have to schedule that separately. Might change in the future depending on what they do with the app. Here we have manual controls. This will allow you to undock the robot and move it around if you wanted to. So here, the joystick that you had when you originally mapped everything. I wish that was a little different. Here we have map management. Here is the one map I had. You can see I can add a zone from here, but I cannot edit a pre-existing no-go zone or add another no-go no -go zone. I would have to reset and remap everything if I want to do that. I can do add a zone without having to do that, but hopefully by the time you're seeing this in the far future, they fix this because this is one of the biggest things that I know myself and other people have complained about. Coming down, we have firmware. Just as it sounds, this will show you what your firmware is looking like. If you have it connected to Wi-Fi, you can download that over the Wi-Fi signal, or if you don't, you would have to download it to the phone first and then Bluetooth it over, meaning you have to keep the phone within proximity. Here you have help and feedback. As it sounds, here's a whole bunch of information that you have about your EcoFlow blade. All done digitally. Helps keep the paperwork down. Mower settings. Here we have master volume. This is going to be these those audio prompts that you get from the robot itself. Mower lighting. This will, as it sounds, turn on and off the lights, which is useful if you don't want it sticking out like a sore thumb in the middle of your yard in the complete darkness. I wish that they had moved this somewhere else because before I started digging through all the options, the first thing I thought of is like, well, I wish I could turn the lights off. Well, you can. It's just buried in two submenus. Child safety lock, this will prevent the robot from being restarted if tampered with or picked up by pushing the two buttons on the robot itself. It will require the application in order to unlock it and restart it. And here we have account binding reset and factory reset. Just like they sound, it will reset your device. Here we have unit length, US or metric. And then here we have find mower. Right now I zoomed into where it is because I don't necessarily want to show where that is, but you can see directions. It's 83 feet from my current location and I can mark as lost. If I select directions, I can go into Google map and it will direct me exactly there. Mark as lost will lock the thing down and nobody can do anything with it when it's locked down. And then I can unlink from my account. Not going to be doing that, but just as it sounds, it will remove this mower from your account so that you can give it to somebody else or get a new mower or have more than one. But that is currently everything that you can do with the EcoFlow app for the EcoFlow Blade. It is a very bare bones application. I do wish that they made this one a little more functional and feature rich. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, this up here, this is just letting you know, hey, it's got good satellite signal. There's other robots out there that let you know exactly how many signal, how many satellites it's connected to. I wish they would do something like that. It's a good start and I know it will improve because a lot of the gripes that I have with it right now are software based and that means that they can update it by updating the application. So a lot of people haven't shown the application in its full glory. Hopefully you found that helpful. I do understand the other thing aside from watching it cut. Another thing that a lot of people are gonna to wanna to know is obstacle avoidance. Testing, hey, show me, does it stop? and move away from a ball, from a rake, stuff like that. So let's take a moment to check out some of the tests that I ran for this. Robot stopped in an emergency. Press the power button and start button to continue. I got a piece of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
that. Now it does not see the rake either. Oh, it sees that. Sees that too. It has to be tall enough. For science. And a ball. So, a little bit of water. And there it goes after the rain delay. Pretty much picking up right where it left off. And I'm just gonna run it up the hill here and see how it does. Again, this is not cutting, this is merely driving. So, not entirely sure slope-wise how this would do. So here it's going up a grade. It's getting to the top there. You can see it's slowing down a little bit. And there we go, made it to the top. So I'll bring it down. There we go, bringing it down, same grade. Give you an idea how that looks. Okay. Now we're gonna go back up the grade a little bit. And try and do a side to side, see how that looks. So this is the steepest point of the grade. And I'm gonna bring it over this way. And kind of see it struggling a little bit. It's kind of working its way down. All right, and we're gonna swing it. Do this way. So that's kind of an idea of what it would look like on a grade. Again, not mowing and it's outside my area, so can't exactly control it 100%. Now, concluding from my test, it does appear because of the angle of those sensors, if something is kind of nestled in the grass, it really can't discern the difference between the garden shovel, the rake, the glove when it was flat. They all got ran over. That's because they kind of nestled into the grass and I don't think this could figure that out. Hopefully in future firmware updates, they can fix that. You saw when the glove was kind of puffed up a little bit, it avoided it as well as it didn't run me over and it didn't run the ball over, which is very important. Now, I will mention that when I was doing the hill test so I could check the angle, I was not running the blades and I had the mowing deck as high as it would go. So just food for thought in case you're wondering how that was running. Some other questions that I've seen come up. Night mowing, can it do it? Yes, as you can see here, it can do it. The lights will help you know where it is, but are not necessary for actual navigation because it's GPS based and using those LiDAR sensors, as you can see here, to navigate its way around. So yes, it can work at night, However, in my opinion, especially the region that I'm in, things kind of get damp overnight, and guess what? Well, that's gonna stick to your EcoFlow blade. It's gonna look like this. It's gonna get very dirty. It's going to require more maintenance than just sending it out in the daytime when things are a little drier. Similarly, can you run it in the rain? You can run it in the rain. Again, however, it's something that you probably don't wanna do. It does have that rain sensor that will allow you to say, hey, if you detect rain when things hit those two connection points, go back to the charging station and wait. And then in the application you saw, I can have a slider as to how long it will wait before it goes back out. Now, again, the app 
aftermath of cutting in the rain is going to look very similar to what mine looked like after cutting at night because of the dew and the moisture. It's going to clog things up. You don't want to do that. That's also going to add excess wear to the blade and cutting deck. Do you really want to do that? Speaking of the blades, if the grass is too tall, meaning you didn't mow beforehand uh, and you did like tests like I was doing where you clearly saw it was pushing over things to cut them down. If the grass is too long, it can get stuck in the blades themselves and freeze them in place, meaning they won't do the safety swing. Still talking about the blades themselves. You do get about a season's supply of blades in the box with the EcoFlow blade because EcoFlow states that you should get between three weeks to a month use out of a set of blades. When they need changing, they're going to look pretty nasty. They're gonna look like this. EcoFlow recommends changing out both the blade and the screw that hold the blade in place when you are making changes. Now, me personally, I'm wondering, the blades have two sides. Can I flip it over and use it the other way? Well, I've been testing that currently and it still remains loud, so you probably do need to replace the blades altogether. I wish they wouldn't have a double-sided blade if it's the case because it just makes me think I should flip it over and try. But you can't, so replace them when you start hearing it get a little loud. An interesting safety feature that I mentioned before can be seen here along the cutting deck. If we flip over the blade, I mentioned that these cages are to help if you grab it from the side. You can see the blades right there, and my blades are frozen in place because of grass, as I mentioned before, but the cage collect grass and debris. Here, I'm going to use my pen for my notes here. I'm gonna poke out some of this grass that's kind of collected. And while the cage is good to protect yourself from getting hurt, it's a good idea to every now and then, especially if you're cutting wet grass or taller grass, to kind of come in there and clean that out because that's gonna slow down your blade. It's gonna kind of make things noisier, make it have to work harder. But while we're also under here, I wanna take a moment to talk about this because I didn't really talk about this. You have guides up front here, on the very front by the charging pad, and then under the blade itself to help kind of comb your grass to make it easier for the EcoFlow blade to cut. I kind of like that. Didn't mention that, haven't seen anybody else mention that. Just wanted to point that out while we were under here. I have been talking about my experiences, showing you tests, showing you setup, so that you could help formulate your own opinion. But seeing as I've had this for just about a month now, I formulated some of my own opinions and I've broken them up into two categories. One, issues, and two, wants slash needs. So we're gonna start with some of the issues that I've had with this robotic lawnmower. The first day that I sent it out on the schedule, it got trapped. And by trapped, I mean, it looked like it went too close to a no-go zone and just froze up. Thankfully, I adjusted my schedule so that by the time I'm coming home from work, I can see it and move it. And that's all it took was me to move it two inches, not even, and then press the start button to start the routine. First day, sending it out on a schedule. I watched it do the map before and it is saying that it is stuck. On what? I cannot see. But we're gonna take a look under here. Speed slope detected. Well, now it says there's... I do not know what it was doing. Also, this is probably the third or fourth time that I've taken the robot out. And these razor blades, they look pretty jacked up already. I don't have any rocks that it's hitting. So, don't know what's going on there. Arbitrarily does that, there's no rhyme or reason to it. I thought readjusting the no-go zones would do it, or making them wider, or moving the cutting deck height. It's, it's random. I still don't know what causes it. Other people have complained about it. You might have to babysit this a little more than you'd want if you're sending it out. I am not a fan of the charging pads on this lawnmower. Apparently, they're two style of charging, uh, charging pads. And the style that I have on this one is the original before they made changes. The changed ones are pogo pins. So the chances of you having charging issues with the pogo pins one than this one, because debris gets on this, such as that grass when you cut at night. If there's grass on this cutting on the charging pads and it tries to dock, battery will just go down as it's in standby mode. Why they shipped the EcoFlow blade with the old style charging pads, I don't know. The pogo pins are probably much better in my opinion because it's got more contact surfaces and they'll move instead of needing a completely flat surface to be in contact with. I'm hoping that if EcoFlow sees this, they can send out a kit that will let you change those, especially for people who bought this day one right when it launched and have the old style charging pads who were not part of the beta test. Sometimes I have found that the EcoFlow will get itself stuck in 
divots. My lawn is not perfectly level, but I think part of that is due to the way that it turns itself. It whips from left to right, as you can see here, and sometimes if the wheel is just just enough to get stuck in a div divot, it will pivot the axle in the back and go, nope, I can't do it, I'm stuck, come and help me. I, I wish that uh, that could be changed, that maybe it'll slow itself down instead of whipping around as it does. I know it'll add cut time, but it would be nice to see. As mentioned when we were talking about the blades themselves, the fact that you have to change the blades every three weeks, depending on lawn usage, you saw mine got really nasty and I chipped them up pretty good uh, with just basic lawn usage. I wish in the application that there was a timer or something that you could set. This way I don't have to remember to go out and look and say, hey, I need to change these. And they probably do that because every lawn is different, so people's use cases might be different and the blades will wear down faster. Yeah, I, I wish that was a little more upfront and out there. This is the first robotic lawnmower I've had. Maybe it's like that for other ones, but just making a data point for you for an issue that I have found. Wants and needs. This is things that could be fixed in the future using software. First, need a way to check the RTK signal without having to go through the setup process again. I want a simple, hey, click here and I'll show you your RTK strength. Manual control for the mower should not be buried in a submenu. I want that on the first page so that I can go click and move it to where I need to do. It also, if connected to Wi-Fi, if you're able to, because that was a process and a half, but if you're able to connect it to Wi-Fi, when it gets stuck, when it's done mowing, when it's returning because of rain, there should be the ability to send out a push notification to my phone letting me know. Instead of me having to open up the app, look and see if it's out there and stuck, or using one of my cameras to try and see, hey, is it moving? Is it in a dead spot? I don't know. Job history, when in the application, needs to show an actual map. Don't just say the job was run and then square footage. I want to see the map. Needs to be able to mow in different directions. Yes, I like the lines that it does, but you don't want to wear a path in your grass. I want it to be able to go in a different direction. I'd also like the ability to kind of give it a little guidance as to the direction it should be going, because the first time I took this out, it was doing this weird angled thing, which to me was not efficient at all, and took twice as long as the current run that I have it on, where it's just going straight up and down how I would normally mow. I mentioned this before, but need to be able to edit the map and no-go zones without having to recreate the map in its entirety. I know that you can add a new section, but I want to be able to edit a pre-existing map. Again, that should be able to be done through software. Also need a better GPS signal guide instead of just the little marker icon in the top left of the application that shows blue, orange, or red. I wanna see number of GPS lock. I want something else. I want that to be green, actually. So green is good in most cases, not blue, but the blue lights coincide with the lights that you have on the front and the back bumper there, letting you know that everything is okay. There also needs to be an edge mowing mode only, not just a follow-up to after it does an actual run. Again, these are mostly soft base. If the application can be updated, then this can be updated. That can happen. Those are really my issues and wants with this currently. So where does that leave me? Because of some of the instances that I've had with this lawnmower, I'm going to say it is the lawnmower that you love to hate. When it works, it's pretty good. It does what it's supposed to do. I don't have to come out here every week and mow two lawns. It takes care of that for me. When it doesn't work though, it's a pain in the butt. It randomly stops. It gets locked up. It gets trapped for no apparent reason. So you you have to take time to figure out the issue. If you just don't move it and it takes care of that, or you'll have a litany of errors in the application. Oh, charging pads, there's a problem. Oh, the, the RTK doesn't have a signal lock. There's a lot of things that you have to troubleshoot with this. So you're not outside spending time mowing your lawn, but you are gonna be spending time fixing or troubleshooting the mower itself. So realistically, I wouldn't set this up on a schedule to work when you're not around, just in case you need to come out and fix something. Being able to do some things remotely with this is helpful, kind of mixed feelings. I like it for what it does when it's doing it right. When it's not doing that right, it kind of, it hurts. As I mentioned at the top of the review, this is a mower. It is not the world first robotic sweeper. The sweeper is an attachment that you have to get. And I wish EcoFlow would work on their branding with that because the mower itself, say it's a mower. Don't market it as a mower sweeper when you have to buy an accessory that makes it sweep as well. The big things that I can think of with this lawnmower is it is cost prohibited. It is an expensive mower. In fact, if you're looking at a baseline riding lawnmower, this is right up there with that. My thing is, for me personally, a riding lawnmower, one, you have to have a place to store it, but two, you also still have to go out and mow the lawn. With this, I don't have to do that. Yes, both require a certain level of maintenance to be done, but to me, I feel the maintenance 
maintenance for this is much less, at least right now at time of filming. Overall, I feel like the EcoFlow Blade is a Gen 1 product because it is, but I still feel that EcoFlow is kind of beta testing it a little bit and you're buying into a beta test product. I hate to say it. I did that with the original EcoFlow Wave, never did a review on it because there were just a lot of issues with it that I didn't want to put out there into the world because I was really frustrated with it. I'm not really frustrated with the blade itself because of the price and because of some of the shortcomings, I can see a lot of people not wanting to get this. I will fully admit, even purchasing this with the idea that I could do a review for YouTube for this, I was hesitant about putting down the kind of money that you're going to be putting down for this. I've given you a lot of data to digest, and that's what this is. My personal experiences and my data points for this, hopefully allowing you to make an informed decision if this is something that you want to get. If you're willing to take that roll of the dice, despite the frustration that I've had with this, I am still happy that I got this. EcoFlow was first in the market with a GPS boundaryless robot lawnmower. I have been waiting three years for this technology to come out. They were first to market this year with it, and I'm very happy that they were because there are some other ones that are coming out, but they're not coming out until much later. So, despite my frustration at times with this mower, I'm happy I got it and hope that in the future, with software updates, that it will get even better over time. As of now, EcoFlow has promised rapid pushes of firmware updates to the application and the robot lawnmower, again, at time of filming. So hopefully, if you get this in the future, the problems that I'm talking about now have totally been resolved and you're looking at this mostly to see how it does mowing and some of those general maintenance things that I've talked about. If you know what you're getting into and you're comfortable with the price point, I am not regretting my purchase of this robotic lawnmower. With that being said, I have been Wanderer 001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee. Link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.